Good evening and welcome to tonight's City of Burnside Council meeting of April the 9th, 2024. Please stand if you are able and remain silent during the acknowledgements. We acknowledge that the land we meet on today is the traditional land of the Ghana people and that we respect their relation, spiritual relationship with their country. We also acknowledge the Ghana people as the original custodians of the Adelaide region and that their cultural and heritage beliefs are still important to the Ghana people today. We pay respect to the cultural authority of Aboriginal people visiting and attending from other areas of South Australia and Australia. On behalf of the City of Burnside, I gratefully acknowledge and pay respect to all those who have sacrificed their lives for this country and its people. We also consider in our thoughts all those who today are being affected by war around the globe and especially those in Ukraine and the Middle East. We seek guidance in our debate as we make decisions that will impact on the lives of all who reside, study, work in or visit the city of Burnside. Grant us wisdom as we serve our community. Please be seated. Just some final reminders to not use your mobile phones, to turn your microphone off when you have finished speaking and be respectful of the speaker so that they can be heard appropriately. Now to the agenda. We have two reports, three motions on notice, one confidential matter and no deputations. Excuse we me, have Ned. no absences when we get to that item. Ah. We have no absences. Um, declarations of interest. Reminder. Um, you have been reminded about how that is to proceed in, um, in future. Confirmation of minutes. Councillor Davey, are you seeking to move the minutes? Yes, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Councillor Cornish, you're seconding? Yep. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Uh, no adjourned business. Public presentations, no question time, but uh, now Councillor Davey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I move that we accept a le late deputation from Dr Chris Alderman on the subject of trees in Burnside. Do you have a seconder? Second. Councillor Zing, you're seconding? Happy to second, Mayor. All right. All those in favour? Against? Motion's carried. So, um, sorry, I'm, it's, if you'd like to come to the table at the front here, and you have, I'm sure Councillor Davy has given you some instructions. I didn't receive this deputation until, attempt until five to four this afternoon. So, um, um, and it didn't come officially, so I am just accepting this tonight. So if you'd just like to state your name and the suburb in which you le live, you have five minutes with a warning bell of four, and then if you wouldn't mind sitting or remaining seated in case there's any questions that people have afterwards. Thank you. Try again. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. My name is Dr Chris Alderman. I live in Leebrook, just up the way here. Uh, and I've come this evening to talk about the matter of trees value the opportunity to do so. Um, I have a general interest in the health of the trees around the, the area, um, but obviously this is uh, in particular um, spurred by an incident that had happened near to my house and resulted in the destruction of my, my son's car. Uh, a branch from the tree uh, dislodged and fell, and I understand that this happens with trees. The trees have a tendency to lose branches and can cause property damage. My interest is in the processes used to maintain an understanding of the health of the trees in the area. In particular, very large and potentially dangerous trees such as the one I've just referred to, which was a river red gum, and I would estimate it in the order of 45 to 50 metres tall. It's enormous. A bough from that tree dislodged and crushed my son's car. It's written off and destroyed. Um, this is not the first time, nor the second, nor the third time that this tree has dropped large branches and caused property damage. Uh, fortunately for us, we were insured. We're still out of pocket for the, uh, for the cost of the excess. My son's not so lucky. He's a young man, not particularly well off, and uh, he needed to uh, be without a car. Um, Notwithstanding all of that, the issue I think is broader than that and it relates to the fact that these trees are scattered right throughout this area 
they're, they're huge, they do drop branches, I understand that. I understand that there needs to be some sort of process in place whereby the health of the trees can be assessed and that if the tree is found to be not in a good state of health or of a dangerous nature, it can be remediated. Um, a limb can be removed or the tree can be removed as is the case in the tree I referred to just beforehand. It is to be removed. Um, there has been some delay in removing it uh, related to legal matters seeking recompense because of the damage involved. Um, I, the other issue relates to indemnity and I understand the parameters of the Local Government Act indemnify the Council against damage from trees if in fact there hasn't been prior advice that the tree is dangerous. I contend and my legal advice uh, agrees that that's not the case in this case and there's been ample opportunity to convey this. We've received some communication to tell us that an arborist has, has assessed the tree uh, but it's not at all transparent. My view is that if an arborist is to actually assess the trees, we need to be certain of their qualifications and their experience and be able to rely on the fact that what they're doing uh, renders a result that actually is, uh, is safe. That's the first thing I'd put. The second thing is I think there needs to be proactive monitoring of the trees in the area of the council uh, and proactive action if the tree is deemed to be unsafe. At the foot of the street I live in, uh, which I'm happy to tell you is Stanley Street, just down the way here, there is a huge river red gum tree which is clearly dead. There is no sign of life whatsoever, has been dead for possibly a couple of years now. It is an accident waiting to happen. If someone dies uh, because of that tree, it's very clearly something that could have been foreseen and prevented. The tree needs to be removed, uh, as does the tree outside of our house, and I suspect others. I understand that there's an application or a, a process in train to uh, have a, a playground uh, upgraded in the area where there are several trees of a similar nature and my advice to you as a scientist is that this is a dangerous situation. An accident waiting to happen, a child or an adult or an older person there could come to serious harm as a result of falling limbs. Uh, and so my, my request to the council is that people take this matter um, on notice and consider how you might go about the business of ensuring that there's no serious danger to people in the area and property less ob obviously. Look, property is not unimportant but people are more important and that's really what I'm here to talk to you about this evening. I would hate to see a situation where, and I understand somebody's already lost a life in this area. Um, I'd hate to see that happen again. Could it easily happen to my wife and son if they were sitting in that car uh, an hour before when at the time uh, the weather was not particularly extreme. The weather that on that day was recorded as two kilometre per hour winds and 26 centilfius at the time of the accident. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, Dr Alderman, for coming along tonight. Um, yes, I've moved a motion tonight about um, upgrading a playground under a group of river red gum trees, um, which other residents have um, raised with me as being a concern. Um, I wasn't aware of the other river, dead river red gum at the corner of Stanley and Tusmore, I assume you mean. Had, do you know how long that's been ailing and dying? And thank you also for coming along tonight. That's okay. right, it's my Thanks pleasure. Uh, look, I'm not an arborist and I can't, I can't speak with authority, but to my eye, that tree has been dead for more than a year um, and ailing for much longer than that. It constantly drops materials on the road. There's a poor, long-suffering man who's always out there sweeping and cleaning up. Um, it's, it's difficult. I should say also that I'm not an anti-tree person. I love the trees. I wish they could all remain. Um, I love the trees and the environment they provide for the birds and other wildlife. But when it comes to prioritising a tree over the safety of a human being, I can't see that as being tenable. Is there anyone else who wishes to ask a question? If, if not, then thank you very much for coming in and uh, speaking to us tonight. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you.
Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wonder if the um, motion on notice item could be brought forward so that Dr. Alderman is able to hear it while he's here tonight, if, if anybody else agrees with me. It's entirely in your hands, members. Councillor Zing. Happy to second that motion. Uh, it's a motion that we deal with item number 13.3 now rather than later. Anyone else wish to speak on it? Councillor Jones? Uh, can I speak against it? Yes. Uh, I, uh, with respect, I don't feel that that deputation was about the motion. It was about trees in general and maybe river red gums, but there are two and a half thousand river red gums in the city of Burnside. What are we gonna do? We're gonna cut them all down? Um, uh, I, uh, and as you may recall, I have a long-standing objection uh, to this kind of procedural changes. We changed the agenda order to put elected member motions on notice at the back so that we concentrated on the business of council first and then got to motions on notice. So I'm going to have to vote against. Since there's no one on my screen, I will count, uh, allow Councillor David to speak. Oh, thank you. Um, it's just that um, if Dr Alderman took the time to come along tonight, um, I thought it would be polite, as we often do with um, motions that um, residents and ratepayers have come to, to talk about and talk in association with, that we give them the courtesy of being able to hear, hear it while following their deputation. So I would hope that people support that, as we have done in the past. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Motions carried. So we move now to item 13.3, page 41. Councillor David. Thank you, Mayor. I move in accordance with the motion on notice that um, should be up on the screen. That Council receives a report which addresses the following consideration of the apparently significant risks associated with investing in the upgrade of the small playground for young children located at Knightsbridge Reserve, Leebrook, beneath and adjacent to a major significant stand of eight plus eucalyptus trees, possibly regulated or significant tree status, possible alternative locations for relocation of the playground and deferral of any work on the current playground until council considers the risk report. I've raised this issue because there are major concerns raised by the community and also because of my knowledge of the number of tree and branch failures, both locally in Leebrook and Hazelwood Park and more broadly across Burnside. Plus, with my knowledge, training and expertise in public, work health and safety and risk management, that we may not have sufficiently considered the, the I believe, significant risks associated with up grading a playground for zero to six year olds, our tiniest residents, beneath and adjacent to a stand of river red gum trees. Our community loves our old trees, particularly our old remnant vegetation, and there is huge concern for us, which, what, which we share, to preserve what remains of these. Climate change, infield development, and increasing population growth place huge challenges on this. However, we investigate significantly in tree management practices. We can maintain our significant and regulated trees and our tree canopy cover, which are essential for our health. But we have to make decisions based on relevant and careful data collection and scientific um, and arboreal assessments and reports. Despite all this effort and investment, tree and limb failures do occur without warning and not just associated with some of the big storms we've recently experienced, and we've heard that tonight. Therefore, I do ask for your support to consider the wisdom of upgrading this playground and that we review and report 
and that a review and a report containing the risk profile of this situation, including detailed arborist reports and a local government mutual liability scheme assessment with possible alternative locations provided for the playground. Our playground strategy, which is now 10 years old, 2014 to 2024, is out of date and does not consider environmental considerations. It only recommends that playgrounds be considered for location within 500 metres of everyone. And there were only 11 responses as outlined in the report to the community consultation undertaken 18 months ago. This warrants, in my opinion, this warrants a review and I ask for your support that this be undertaken and that any work to upgrade the playground is deferred until Council consider this, the, the risks of this further. Thank you. Councillor Harvey, you seconding? Uh, yes, I am. I reserve my right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Dawes. Yes, could I have a, a question first to the CEO? And it's in relation to point three of the motion concerning the risk report. Now, Councillor Davey did talk about what that could uh, contain. So I'm supposing here that we're not be looking for Stephen Smith and his team to, to do the report. It actually goes to an outside consultant. Can you just help me? How would we deliver that risk report back to council? Uh, through Madam Mayor, I'll just get Mr Kant to talk about how he would propose to approach that one. Through your worship, um, I believe a significant amount of what's being asked for has actually been undertaken by the team and that information has been provided to council either through the CEO comment or um, through the subsequent emails over the last few days. If council wishes to go over and above what the work that we've done to this place, then it would require an independent um, review of that work and a further risk analysis, which would have obviously come at a cost. Um, but if that's what the council wishes to do, we will do so. Councillor Cornish. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I'd like to offer up an amendment, if I can, to this motion. Um, I'm looking for a new number two and uh, dropping the two and three down to three and four, obviously. Um, and putting in um, possible replacement of the eucalyptus trees, the eight eucalyptus trees, um, to a safer variety of tree um, as, as one of the things that the report can be, can consider. Right, so I accept it as an amendment, not a variation, so we'd need a seconder for that. Councillor Henschke, you're seconding? Mm -hmm. Okay. I've Councillor Hallett, are you going to speak on this amendment? I wanted to ask a question of the amendment. Oh, certainly. Um, can, you read, can you say it again? Because oh, I didn't understand what you're getting at. I think that would be a good idea to wait till we get it up on the screen before you start debating it or even asking any questions. You didn't get to speak to it either. We'll just get it up and then I'll let you speak to it and Councillor Henschke is going to withhold. Apologies. I think you might need to repeat it, Councillor oh, Cornish. No, I think they're... No, they're okay. Yeah, they're typing... Remember, they have to actually finish the whole typing and click save before it appears. Yeah, there we go. Yep, that should be fine. Um, uh, thank you, Worship, for taking this as an amendment. Um, as Dr Alderman said, um, people are more important than trees. Um, and uh, if we're getting a report on the risk and safety of this pocket park, 
um, I think that it would be quite important to us to actually look at not only removing the pocket park and the playground and putting it somewhere else, but also removing the trees. That should be an alternative to, in the report to look at uh, removing the trees and putting in a safer variety for obviously shade or maybe put a shade structure up there as well. But if, if we're asking for a report, we should see all aspects of the report, not just you know relocate a playground. We should also look at um, getting rid of the trees and putting something else better. That's my amendment. Councillor Davey, you have a question? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so I'm just wanting to clarify that there's removal of all of those eucalyptus trees. Is that unsafe one? Yeah. Oh, and what would, I'm wondering what that would cost in terms of um, talking about costs and, and um, replacements. Uh, through Madam Mayor, that's something we'd have to flesh out in the report. We'd have to have to do some homework to understand the cost of removal for each individual tree. So that would be included in, my understanding is Councillor Cornish is seeking to have this included in the report that would come back for Council's consideration. Councillor Hallett, you have a question or you? Question, please. Um, I'm confused. I thought it was said that the tree that Dr. Baldwin was talking about was on the corner of Tusmore and Stanley. But this park is um, is not near there. It's up the other. It's on Rochester. So I'm confused. Are we just discussing the the um, pocket park with the play equipment and the stand of eight trees, or are we doing that and the tree on the corner of? At, at the moment, we are only referring to this motion, which is talking about the pocket park in okay. Knightsbridge. If I may, Madam Mayor, and, and in fact, at this point in time, we are only talking about the amendment. Yes, that's right. Okay. Councillor Wilkins, no. Councillor Hallett, do you wish to speak again? Okay. <coughs> um, is is what Councillor Cornish proposing? the amendment, it, does that mean that all of the trees would be replaced? So the eight existing mature trees would be cut down? Or is uh, it one? That no, I think the, he's calling for a report to find out whether or not any one or more of those trees should be cut down. Okay. And so I'll accept that as a question rather than a, a comment. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, I just asked the CEO, sorry, I asked the CEO to correct me if I was wrong, sorry, that's all. Sorry, if I can just add a bit more clarification, yes, Madam Mayor. Um, my understanding is, obviously this is only to be included in the report, and it's looking to remove, if these eight eucalypt trees are dangerous, it's saying maybe we need to explore the removal of all eight. Now, now Councillor Hallett, can you turn your mic off, please? And Councillor Jones. Uh, I, I thank Councillor Cornish for this amendment. My personal view is that people and trees have coexisted in the city of Burnside quite happily for um, over a century, but uh, he makes a good point that uh, we need to consider all options, and uh, I'm glad that somebody's thinking of the children, so thank you, Councillor Cornish. Councillor Henschke, do you wish to speak? Because otherwise I'm going to go back to Councillor Cornish. Uh, no, no, we don't on the amendment, do we? Yes, please, Madam okay. Mayor. A question for the administration. <clears throat> the timing of this report is not in this motion. Uh, your advice to add some timing to this? I, I, I know that the residents of Webb Street Reserve are waiting for the repurposing of the steering wheel of this particular children's truck so they can enjoy their fire truck in Webb Street Reserve steering wheel. There's a steering wheel in the, fire, in the Webb Street Reserve which is going to be replaced with the, we the Knightsbridge steering wheel from that equipment. So they're waiting on Co that. Councillor Hedgeke, that's not a question about the amendment. No. And I thought you were seconding 
to the amendment and speaking to the seconding of the amendment. Yeah, so it was a question. I'll accept it as a question. All right, Councillor Dord. Yeah, so look, I, I must be a bad grandparent because I take our grandchildren to this uh, playground regularly. I'm more worried about the traffic on Phillip Avenue in Rochester than I am about going to the playground. I have to admit, uh, Dr Alderman, that I do look up at those trees before I go in there and they are magnificent trees which have been well looked after by the arborist of this council. Uh, I'm shocked that we want to even consider removing any of them. Uh, council Turnbull and I have received various emails from residents. Uh, one wanted to remove all gum trees throughout Burnside. So that was one side and the other side was let them be. Now the answer is in the middle, which is what I think uh, Dr Autumn was talking about, is having regular review of these trees. Now none of these trees in this particular playground I have never seen, and this is over a period of two or three years, one large branch because they have been well looked after. And there are resident homes all around this particular park. So Look, I just, I just can't support either the amendment or the motion because I do not believe there is the risk that, um, that is being mentioned here because of the work that the staff have done to ensure that risk is, is as low I'll as... I'll just stop possible. you now because you only get a minute for an amendment. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now Councillor Hallett. I'd like to speak against the recommendation. I'd like to speak against the amendment and the recommendation, actually. But um, uh, my concern is the precedent that this sets across the council area. Um, and I'd like to remind members of some statistics, and this is from um, a 2019 report from the Arboriculture of Australia that found the risk of being killed by a tree is one in five million and the risk of being killed by a tree whilst inside my house is one in 189 million. This compares with other common risks in our society, which is the risk of dying from a melanoma, which is one in 13,500, of driving, one in 20,000, being murdered, one in 100,000, falling off a chair, one in one million, and that the chance of being struck by lightning is one in 12,000. When I'm in bed, I've got a significant that, Sorry, tree. that's all you can no. have time for in your, uh, on the amendment. If anyone wants references for those, we've got each reference. Okay, uh, next person to speak is Councillor Jennings. Uh, uh, thank you, um, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm going to speak against this amendment. I'm not a big fan of cutting down trees just to replant them, to replant s safer trees. Um, I'm generally a pretty risk averse person and I do like Councillor Hallett's argument about what are the odds because I like to swim in the ocean and ever since I've seen Jaws, um, it's always been in the back of my head, like, could I get taken by a shark? So, um, and I still swim in the ocean and, like, I, you know, my, my family shack is at Selix Beach, which is just down the coast from Aldinga, where there's the second deadliest place to be taken by a white pointer. Yeah, um, thank you. Councillor Turnbull. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> I'll speak against the amendment too, but I think the, the recommendation was good without that amendment because really there are, you know, when we think about it, there are 34 playgrounds in the Burnside Council area in an area of 27.53 square kilometres. It's not bad, a lot, a lot of playgrounds. Can't we just remove that playground equipment from the looming danger of the vicinity of 15 mature trees, eight of which are significant eucalyptus trees, 
in which, as we are aware, have a nasty habit of dropping limbs on the unsuspecting. And as for actually cutting down the trees and putting another species in, I thought Burnside was really into uh, tree canopies, uh, tree city of the world, and saving trees. Not, uh, not cutting them down just for a bit of playground equipment. It doesn't mean we have to remove all the playgrounds from the vicinity of large trees or not actually put or replace equipment under them. Times have changed in the last 10 years and we're all more conscious of the fact that big limbs can come down. Can't we just have a park, and it's a very small park, without equipment and experiences and signboards and stuff and things, perhaps a couple of seats away from the significant trees? We've got other parks around at Hazelwood Park, at Kensington Wama. You've gone on for more longer than a minute, and Councillor Turnbull. Honestly, this, I think that we could remove that playground equipment and not even notice it. Thank you. The L's short because they've gone over time. Now, um, Councillor Turnbull, could you turn your microphone off, please? Councillor Hubel. Thank you, Worship. I have a question. If the playground was not replaced um, and, in fact, removed, would the risk of a branch dropping on what would then be vacant space be the same as it would be if there was a playground there? Does the fact there's a playground there impact the likelihood of a tree branch falling? Um, Do you Mayor, think? Madam Mayor, does that question relate to the amendment? Yeah, or yeah, to the yeah item? it does, I think, because... Okay. I think it does. Okay. Because we're talking about the tree no. specifically. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Uh, through Madam Mayor, happy to get Mr Cant to provide comment. Through your worship, not in my opinion, no. Um, there's already a playground there and we're intending to replace it um, in the ex existing uh, location. Um, a tree, if it's going to drop, will tree, it will drop regardless of what's below it. So if the playground, sorry, a follow up yes, on the re related, related to the first. If the playground was replaced, the r current risk of limb failure would be the same for the new playground as it is currently? Through Madam Mayor, yes, that is correct. Right, I'm going to Council Cornish. No, you don't need to. I, Council Zing, you're just in time. I thought a quick question. Um, I recall Councillor Davey mentioned about our overall holistic playground strategy that's due this year and which will give a sort of indication about risk appetite. Um, is that due for renewal this year, the playground strategy? And when's that, when's that presented to Council? Um, through Madam Mayor, if I refer that to Mr Kent. Through your worship, it was a 10-year strategy adopted in 2014. Uh, it goes up to the end of 2024. And we plan to actually align it with the development of the open space layer that we're working towards as well. That will assist us in the next tranche of the playground strategy as part of that. Now I'm going to put the motion, the amended motion. The amendment. The, sorry, the amendment. All those in favour of the amendment. Those against. Right, the motion, the amendment is lost. So we know, now go back to the original motion and continue the debate at this point in time. And continue the debate at this point in time. Councillor Wilkins. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to support this. I actually drove past today and looked at the playground. I actually think the playground done in the far southwestern corner underneath the trees could be actually kept in the same park but put it in the northeastern corner away from the trees rather than not have a playground there and that would alleviate any risk of because it's quite opposite from the trees down in the bottom southwestern corner I think um, it's tucked way down the back and why would you want to have it wiped down there? No, bring it out on the grass into the open and diagonally locate it across to the other point of the park, away from the trees. It's still a shady park. Councillor Dawes would still be able to take his grandchildren there 
there would be very minimal cost in relocating. It's only just um, bark chips down there as soft fall. And I think on grass would be far better um, and keep the trees there. And they can fall on each other as far as I'm concerned, but not on people and not on property. I've had enough of trees falling on property. So that's what I think. I actually do support the relocation of the playground equipment to the diagonally opposite point in the playground. So if that could be assessed in this report, that would be good. Thank you. Councillor Hubel. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, look, I, I am not going to support this motion. Um, I've taken my children to that playground um, most weekends for the last you know, 12 years or so. Um, so very, very familiar with it, and I actually visited it myself when I was a child. Um, I, don't, I don't know what has changed in that six months ago there wasn't a concern about the current playground being moved. Um, obviously, there is an upgrade due, but I just, I just I don't know why there is no difference in a new playground or the existing playground being there. If there was a danger from the trees, this is something that could have been addressed at any time in the last decade or so. Um, so I, it just seems it seemed unnecessary, and I think people are aware of what these gum trees do. And you go into a public place with gum trees, you're accepting of the risk. And if you don't like gum trees above your playground, there are playgrounds without gum trees above them. Um, so I, I think what is a beautiful park with a lovely piece of open grass space. Um, which would be destroyed and ruined. You would lose that open space if, uh, if the playground was relocated. Um, and we're, we're either going to say the trees are a risk or not. And if the trees are a risk, we should look at whether they should be removed, but not removing them, but still saying they're a risk, so we should move the playground is just completely contradictory. It defies logic. It doesn't make sense. Um, it certainly doesn't pl pass the fair dinkum pub test. So you're moving, you want to move the playground because the trees are dangerous, then you must agree to assess whether the trees should be removed because they're dangerous. Because if the playground wasn't there, there would be the same risk to surrounding property. There would be the same risk to people using that space. Now it is clear of a playground. The risk remains the same. But we're willing to move a playground, but not willing to look at whether a tree failure is a possibility by having a closer look at these trees. So you can't have it both ways. This is having your cake and eating it too. And there's just, it stinks. Oh, just a little reminder, Councillor Wilkins, whilst the person is speaking. Uh, Councillor Dawes. Yes, a, another question to the CEO, if, if I may. Um, it was mentioned about you know, we could move the playground to the grassed area. Um, where there's no shade, but I think, and I'm asking this question of you, isn't there a Australian playground standard that we must provide shade? Could you just explain that to the council? Yes, uh, through Madam Mayor, our current approach to SunSmart policies or protection for our children is we either rely on natural shade, which is the trees, or if we have a playground in a location without trees, we would be obliged to erect a, well, a non-natural shade structure. Um, oh, sorry. Um, 
Councillor Turnbull. Oh, thank you, Mayor. My, just a question. Um, can the contract with the suppliers be cancelled? Uh, through Madam Mayor, I'll just get Mr Cairn to clarify that one. Through Your Worship, there's a significant amount of long lead items that has already been ordered, um, so we will be liable for the cost of that equipment. It's possible we could use it elsewhere in the city or put it in storage, but the report and the responses go into some of the details and the issues around that. Um, there will be a certain break cost with the contractor itself as well. We haven't entertained that at this stage because at this stage we have a, a complying contract that's been signed and entered into. Thank you. My follow-up was probably what you said. Uh, can it be deferred until another location is investigated? Through Even if it your takes you 12 months? Through, sorry. Th through your worship, um, yeah, anything's possible. Um, it will be subject to deferral costs. It will be subject to... Uh, the contract of providing that availability um, and the suitability of that equipment being appropriate for another space, um, there will be costs associated with that. Councillor Jones. Uh, a question, if I may, and this kind of relates to the delegation. Um, 2,419 river red gums on City of Burnside land, if we take a playground away that's under eight of those trees, what's our legal position with respect to anything under the remaining 2,411? Because someone will say, well, you guys, you were so worried about these eight trees, you took a playground away. Why did you then ignore what was under the other 2,411? Three. Question. Sorry, Madam Mayor. Interesting for a time. Yeah. Um, no, three, no, three minutes. I, I, I appreciate I, realistic too. I can't give you a definitive response because I probably need some legal advice. But it, it would certainly prompt a need to review all playgrounds, particularly across the city of Burnside, um, if they're close to a gum tree, at a bare minimum, I would imagine. Councillor Day. Thank you. Um, talking about relocating the equipment, um, if we can't delay the um, arrival of it, um, would it be possible to um, locate it for a, a section for naught to six-year-olds, because that's what we're talking about, in Hazelwood Park, where we do have that wonderful, highly popular Wombat Waterhole play space? Um. Through, through you, Madam Mayor, um, ultimately anything's possible. I'd just be concerned that we've consulted with the community on having a playground in this location. So at the very least, I'd suggest it may prompt further consultation requirements around not having a playground in that park and then assessing whether that equipment is appropriate for that location or whether it's even in keeping. Um. Councillor Dawes. Yes, thank you, uh, Mayor. I can speak for how long this time? Three minutes? Yeah. I can, thank you. I forgot about the one minute for, uh, for amendments. Uh, you know, like we've already mentioned the Wombat waterhole, but there are trees in that location too. So I'm thinking, one well, moment, uh, we cut those down and we put up a sail, or, or what are we trying to do here? The other thing I've noticed is that there's been four months, I've just calculated, four months of correspondence between the ward councillors and the staff about trying to get the best solution to this. And we're still not there. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I think the staff have tried their hardest to have what they believe is a fair and reasonable outcome. And what we keep forgetting here is the standard of our own arborist team who have done so much to ensure the safety of the Burnside area. We still have falling branches, I understand that, but as Councillor Haddock has said, the probability in some of these cases is so much less 
compared to a branch falling down. And I have to say that those eight or so uh, gum trees are magnificent. I just wouldn't want to see them cut down. But perhaps I'm a bad grandparent, as I said before, but yeah, I will look at the trees and if I feel one is not quite there or whatever, I won't go in there, but I've had no experience to the contrary. Thank you. Councillor Hedge. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the problem, as I see it, is that we have a motion here uh, which is based on opinion, uh, opinion of apparently significant risks, but the facts are in item 24, the CEO comment is that the, tr the fact is that all trees presented low risk. Um, so, and then further adding to Councillor Dawes' uh, remarks, uh, yes, we've, the fact is there's been several months of correspondence uh, regarding uh, this playground um, and it was mainly about changing bright colours from a playground to a more subdued palette, that was the last correspondence. So no time those several months was there a problem with this um, situation, so I can't support this motion. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor. I am happy to support this motion and I would like to say thank you to Dr Alderman for coming in and giving us a very um, decent uh, deputation tonight. And I think that councillors need to be more respectful of our residents that do come in and take their time to come in and present to us I have driven, driven past this small pocket park many times and wondered why there is a playground directly under such huge gum trees. I have wondered why there is a playground here at all and each time I have driven past there is no child playing there so obviously it's at different times to Councillor Hubel and Councillor Dawes that have their children there, grandchildren. Only a few streets away is the beautiful Hazelwood Park playground that is constantly full of happy children playing. And yes, there are trees here as well. However, why can this tiny little playground, as Councillor Davy has said, not be relocated to Hazelwood Park? It makes sense. I question why every spare bit of green space has to include everything like a playground or outdoor gym equipment instead of providing just a simple, beautiful area to sit and enjoy the open space. I note the lush JFK park on the corner of McGill Road and Gers Road and drove past there only the other day. All it has is a beautiful shady tree lush vegetation and one bench seat, a perfect, beautiful spot to sit and reflect. 11 responses were received for this playground proposal. Hardly a huge response. And why do we need to spend 187,000 on new equipment in a tiny pocket park? I'm surprised Councillor Jones has not brought up the, the cost in this case. Why can this not be a lovely little pocket park without the, the risk of tree limbs falling? And yes, I believe that the risk would not be as significant if there was no playground here because the people would not be standing directly under trees. I will support this motion put up by Councillor Davey and thank her for doing so. Councillor Cornish. Obviously, I can only ask a question, Your Worship. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, with our award-winning urban forest website, um, I note that you guys do track inspections of trees. Can you tell me how many you've actually got there that you've inspected in the last 12 months? And what date the eight trees were actually inspected that we're talking about? Uh, through Madam Mayor, I'll refer it to Mr Cairn. Through your worship, the last assessment on those eight trees was actually in March 2024. Uh, with respect to the la how many times they've been inspected, um, they were definitely inspected in January 2023 as well. Um, they are on a proactive inspection schedule 
of four years at this stage. However, we do inspect those most, more frequently. Um, and there will be a report actually coming to Council at the next meeting, which looks to uh, increase frequency of inspections in certain areas. Thank Councilor, you, Worship. Uh, Councillor David, you have a question? Thank you. Yes, um, um, I, I think that I think it's very interesting about the inspection rates, and it's great. I'm just interested in um, the data that we've had following our uh, storm events, which we've had two significant ones of in recent years. How many trees we lost in those, and how many sudden limb failures we've had outside those storms from trees in our streets and in our parks? Uh, through Madam Mayor, I'll refer to Mr Cant. Um, it's very difficult to quantify, I imagine. Through your worship, we cannot answer that question. Um, I believe there was a question uh, asked along a similar nature, and I circulated the response to all council members with the best data that we could provide. Uh, Councillor Davey, I'm going back to you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone, for your input. Um, I acknowledge that a lot of work has been done to review the risks associated with upgrading the playground, and I've had quite a few conversations, has been, has, has been pointed out. But I think more needs to be done in this situation to manage these risks. Um, as stated, I stated the playground strategy does not mention the environmental impact and consideration of this in the location of playgrounds. Um, if we want to see a wonderful location of a playground, we could move the equipment to the Wombat Waterhole in Hazelwood Park, which is a safe and shady and very popular playground, and I think there is room there for the small footprint that this is. Um, as we've heard, the administration can't give us the data, sadly, for the instances of limb failing limb failures and falling, even as I've asked for the last two years, or for the, the data for the whole trees failing. Um, this is rather strange to my way of thinking. I think it's not readily available, and I did, didn't give that much time. I only asked for, I would have thought we'd have a database where if you asked the question, you could have in 24 hours that uh, um, information at your fingertips, but we don't have that. So we don't have readily updated available information about the failures. We locals know there have been many trees fail in parks and streets recently, both during and following storms. I love trees. I do not want to lose any more trees um, and want to preserve and manage and protect them. And you know, all know I'm always talking about that. But we all know there have been many examples of sudden limb drops and whole tree failures. And this is mainly due to the effects of climate change. And we've also had sustained damage through the drought, recent drought 10, 15 years ago, which I think has weakened a lot of these trees. Um, Councillor Turnbull articulated very well how um, the risk profile has changed. And I can't envisage naught to six-year-old little ones exposed to the risk of a limb dropping totally without warning, which is what is in this situation in Knightsbridge Reserve. Times have changed, risk, risk profiles have changed significantly. We can't expose young children to the risk in 2024 that we did in the past. So all I'm asking is that we, um, and, and, and I know the community consultation was undertaken, that was 18 months ago. We only had 11 responses. So it's a tiny, not very well used part. But I think we need to cover ourselves and our legal responsibilities but most particularly for those most vulnerable in our community. So I think we need to do some more work to protect our little ones, to protect their parents and grandparents, and to make sure that we don't expose anyone to the risks of a sudden limb failure with a little one playing in a playground. And I don't think that in should involve us removing this beautiful stand of trees. So hopefully you'll support this motion. Those in favour? Those against? The motion Division. is lost. Division's been called. So if you voted in favour, please raise your hands. Those in favour were Councillor Harvey, Turnbull, Wilkins, Davey and Zing. Those against, Councillor... Oh, keep your hands up, please. Councillors Jennings, Jones, Hubel. 
Penske, Cornish, Hallett and Dawes. I'll go back to the original agenda and I will call the reports and see if anyone wishes to withdraw those. Uh, did you get all those names? Yeah, okay. okay, fine. All right, so 11.1, .1, Propel SA funding. Seek a mover. Councillor Dawes, you're moving. moving. Seconded, Councillor Cornish. All those in favour? Against, carried. Just before we do, I'd just like to take the opportunity to thank everyone who's been involved with SA, uh, Propel SA. It has been a, an excellent organisation and I commend those people, particularly um, Mr Cooper, for his involvement in that over the years. It was a great attempt to help and support uh, small business. It's sad to see it come to an end, but there is a, a, an alternative being proposed and I'm pleased to see that. I think we have someone at the door who's a bit lost, might need some help to... Thank you. Second one is 11.2, the update on authorisations. Is there anyone wishing to speak to that? Uh, who wishes to move that? Otherwise, uh, Councillor Henschke, you're moving it. Seconded by Councillor Cornish. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Now, Thank you, Mayor. On joining Council, I was looking forward to an induction and orientation of the Civic Centre, an understanding of Council meetings and list of all wards showing all our parks and reserves, sporting clubs and centres, the depot, the shed, that are all included in our wards. To have a civic centred um, diagram as to where everything is located and even the basics of where the toilets are. To see that all elected members are provided with the basics to succeed. To quickly develop our roles whilst building positive and united team relationships with other elected members. I was looking forward to understanding the meeting procedures, mo motions on notice and how to put up a motion on notice and ne necessary protocols. Not having been in local government before, this was all new to me and four other councillors who were also newly elected. Instead, we were thrust into the legal side of council by lawyers and a role play as an introduction to a motion on notice, which I did not find helpful at all. I understand the legal sessions had to be done first. However, why could we not have an orientation time before our first meeting commenced, or at least after the first meeting? Elected members come to council with varied skills and experience. The purpose of this motion on notice is for the next incoming newly elected or re-elected councillors to have the basic understandings of the day-to-day -day runnings of council, to have the support and basic tools to understand what to expect and what is expected of us as councillors as is afforded in any new employee starting in a company. I am told even by experienced councillors that much has changed and ever changing, which is why we need the support. Perhaps this could include a welcome handout pack detailing senior staff, their role, see the CEO, his role, and the mayor's role, and of course councillors' roles, to lead the promotion of positive and constructive working relationships among members of the council to provide guidance to council members on the performance of their role, including on the exercise and performance of their official functions and duties. Leaders at all levels help set the tone for an organisation, including council. Leading with empathy means you are fostering an environment where people feel at ease so they can perform at their very best. I feel had there been a team building session, orientation and induction earlier, this would have been extremely useful and long term ultimately benefit with our important decision making. Perhaps we may not have had such challenging times as we have had settling in. It would have been helpful to have the bus tour of the parks and reserves sooner. When the bus tour finally came, Barry Cant did an excellent job of playing tour guide and bus driver, and he was a wealth of information. I hope you will support this motion. Thank you. Seek a seconder. Councillor Turnbull, do you wish to speak now? Yes, please. Thank 
you. I think this motion has been a long time coming. Thank you, Councillor Harvey, for bringing this issue to the attention of us all. I can still vividly remember my first council meeting of my first term in council. Rabbits in the headlights, best described by myself and my co-councillor. As we lurched with bewilderment through the first council meeting, I think I voted for and against the same motion. Fortunately, the previous CEO kindly took us through the whole meeting again and it made much more sense. We did have some legal workshops, but they were bewildering and one's knowledge of local government is limited to non-existent. The eventual bus trip was crucial in knowing places in Burnside, but it could have been done sooner than it was. An administration I did try and answer questions, which I was grateful. But until the real meetings get underway, it's difficult to comprehend. It takes a long time to understand council rules and regulations, meeting procedures, jargon used, etc. Early induction, including mock meetings, would have been so helpful. I'd also like to see induction of new council members as part of the CEO's KPIs. It expanding on KPI G2, where it's ensure the provision of mandatory training for council members. I'd like to see that, add that uh, induction for new members goes into that one as well. And I'd like to see us check out other councils. What were their procedures and how do they do the induction of their new people? So I'll definitely support the motion. Councillor, could you just turn your microphone off, please, Councillor Turnbull? Councillor Jennings. Oh. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. I am going to support this motion. I also felt a little like I was thrown into the deep end of the swimming pool, just like when I was a kid, having swimming lessons, we'd go back and forth up the pool, and then at the end, you'd be chucked into the deep end and you'd have to swim out. I didn't like swimming lessons, and I'm lucky it didn't scar me too badly. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so I'm very lucky that I've had uh, spent a bit of time on boards and committees and I have a reasonable, ever-learning understanding about how it works. So I, I thank uh, Councillor Harvey for this um, motion and I will be supporting it. Thank you. Councillor Dorp. Thank you, Mayor. From my own experience five years ago, what Councillor Turnbull said was absolutely true. We had some very experienced councillors around the table at the time, and uh, they just led us through those first three or four meetings. The thing that really got me was the budget considerations, because as soon as you're on, within two months, we had to put in budget bids, you know, and we didn't quite know how it was meant to happen. And, and uh, I think we had 30 odd in our first uh, first session here. That wasn't really what we were trying to do, but we just didn't know what we were doing. We were lost. However, there is a email from the CEO yesterday, which I love, CEO. You probably don't remember it, but I'm going to tell you what you said. Um, he he did say the changes to the to the act required more training than any ever before. But he said this caused information overload, which I agree with, and less knowledge retention. We've got so much coming in, we just didn't uh, um, retain it. And sometimes lawyers may not be the best facilitators, I have to say, especially with the conduct of meetings. Um, and the other thing that he said was that we need to cover more of the day-to-day -day practical stuff. And we should follow, as who said, I think it was Councillor Turnbull, what do other councils do? Well, Campbelltown had a whole weekend set aside right, for everybody. Now, some of us didn't like that. I think we have to make the decision as soon as we elect, very, very shortly out, we're going to have a bus tour on the Saturday, we're going to do a couple of, of, uh, of council sessions where we have a mock meeting or whatever. Uh, and they locked themselves away from a weekend and they covered most of the material. So, yep, I said to Councillor uh, Harvey on Tuesday night, I'm going to support this because I went through what you went through a year ago. Thank you. Councillor Day. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a small amendment, or perhaps just a variation, if I may, and that is to include um, an orientation so it becomes a draft induction and orientation policy for elected council members on that first line. 
So it receives a report in the next four months which contains a draft induction and orientation policy. Are you happy to accept that, Councillor Harvey, as a variation? As yes, I am, thank you very much. And the seconder was Councillor Wilkins. Are you happy with that? Sorry, no, it wasn't. It was Councillor Turnbull. Oh, sorry. Are you happy to accept that as a variation? Yes. It's not an amendment, it's only a variation. All right, so therefore it will get added to the motion. Thank you, Mayor. So it's elected members' induction and orientation, orientation policy. policy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harvey, for this motion. Um, I think it's timely as we look back and reflect on our first 16 months after our election in 2022. One of the most important learnings is how we can improve our systems and do things better. We then had five new councillors elected, and I agree that while I was re-elected for my fifth term, an induction program would have been very beneficial so that all of us are on the same page to undertake our legislative and community responsibilities, and particularly have the tools to undertake all the practical aspects of how we do this, as Councillor Dawes has so um, clearly outlined. So we need to know things like what's in the Civic Centre, where do our administration work? What happens at the depot? Who's who in the library? Where are the toilets? Where do we park? How does the CM portal work? What are our communications responsibilities, etc.? So while there was a very heavy emphasis from the get-go on training, on the new behavioural requirements, I think basic induction and orientation should have been held first, before all the heavy legal sessions. It is important that we work together collaboratively with each other and the administration. And this team building begins with the induction and orientation process. It is an investment in the good working and smooth functioning of the City of Burnside, and it's then built on with further information sessions as they're necessary, along with training as appropriate throughout our term. So I think um, an induction and orientation policy is, is the way to go, and I think we should have a policy for this. So hopefully this will be supported. Thank you. Councillor Jones. Uh, I'd like to propose, I don't know if it's an amendment or a variation. So in point one, I would delete receives a report in the next four months, which contains and replace it with holds a workshop or workshops to develop a draft induction policy. And here's, here's why. Hang on, before you go any further, that's an amendment, not okay. a variation. Okay, well, I propose that amendment. So if you want to run it as an amendment. I will run that as an amendment. Look, okay. I, I don't... Before you speak to it, yep. can you just say it again so that it can be recorded? Okay. Sorry, I'm getting some signals over there that perhaps it's not an amendment, so I just need some clarification. Okay. What? Uh, through Madam Mayor, the advice is that it's, it's a significant change because it's Get going from a report to a... Oh, I'm being serious. Oh. To a workshop. Um, so if this fails, then you'd be able to run it. Look, I, I, I'm going to have to vote against this motion then because the, the problem, as I see it with this, is we're asking the staff to tell us what we should be in the induction. And the best people to write the induction policy is us, who sat on council, uh, and we'll do a much better job of saying what should be an in induction uh, as people who've been new councillors and people who are councillors than the staff ever will, quite frankly. Mm. Uh, and that would be a much better way to do it in, in a workshop. We'd probably need more than one workshop. Uh, but I think that, that way we'll get things that will really be valuable to new members, as opposed to the council staff guessing what they think would be valuable to new members, and this, then us having to go back and forth in emails uh, amending things, this would be a much, I, I think, much more efficient way of doing that. And then, no doubt, the staff can overlay on top of that 
everything that the Local Government Act says you have to have. Um, but we might be able to do some suggestions of, um, uh, of, of ordering. Look, I, I agree. I, I think that mock debate was a total disaster. Um, I would never, never do it again. Um, uh, our, part of our problem, I think, last time was when we were elected our first meeting, we voted to do nothing for nine weeks. Um, which we probably should have said, well, actually, we probably need to intensively get some, get some stuff into the heads of new councillors. So that was probably a, a, a lesson learned for me. Um, so, look, uh, regrettably, I'm going to have to vote against this motion, but I hope I'll be able to move a slightly improved motion afterwards. Um, the CEO has something to add before we move on. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I guess there's a broad comment. I just want to say... I'm in furious support of this motion in terms of we all want to just want to get this done correctly and for the benefit of elected members. I'm prepared to make to give an undertaking that if this gets up prior to putting this together, we will provide an opportunity for elected members to have an input, get your ideas to help us put this together. So I'm happy to make that commitment. Can, can I just suggest, and um, the move of the motion might like to change, the urgency of four months we have a fair bit of time. Could I suggest we change it to six months to allow a bit more time? When we've got budget and everything else happening, just give, it a, give the council administration a little more time and the opportunity for us to have uh, subsequent... Um, because this is not going to actually impact for another two and a half years. So I'm, I'm just asking whether you might consider changing it to six months instead of two, four If you're not prepared to, that's fine. Well, I don't know why we, we actually need to, because as, as, in, as, in, as in number two, we're actually inviting for input once it comes back to us. So um, as far as Councillor Jones wanting to amend it... You, you don't, no, no, you don't, need to, you don't need to go on. All I was ask, suggesting was... Would you consider as a not a, an amendment and a variation by making it six months instead of four to make it less urgent? If the answer is no, then I don't need to go any further. I'll now go to Councillor Cornish. Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, I'm going to support this motion. Um, I'm in agreement that we do need a policy. Um, I would also like to acknowledge the great work, though, the administration has done um, with this. Uh, looking on our portal and having a look in the training section, I can see our orientation presentation that we received on the 29th of, of November 2022 that goes through where we park and the CM portal and all that sort of stuff. The, that huge legal meeting that we had also on the 29th of November 2022, which sort of probably goes to your information overload. And then um, two days later, on the 1st of December, we had our values, ethics and behaviours workshop that went on forever as well. And then after that, we voted for no more workshops until after the first, and after the first uh, uh, meeting of the following year. So we, we did put a hold on it, and that was our own choice um, at that time. Um, so, but I actually think this is extraordinarily important for a number of reasons. The first one being that anyone who actually nominates and puts their hand up knows full and well that the first weekend after you get elected, that's it. You're working you know, nine to five on that weekend and you're learning and you're going. So if you're going to put your hand up, you're going to need to take some time off. If we have, you know, in the induction policy, what is actually required as soon as you get elected. So I think it's really good to hand out to people saying this is what you're up for as soon as you get elected. So be ready and don't book holidays. Um, uh, I, I, I really do think that that is very important to actually have. Um, you know, I also think that it's important that we do have some input because clearly who delivers and how it gets delivered is very important and the length of time that it gets delivered as well is, is very important. I am, I am recalling a, a gasps from Councillor Wilkins during one of our training sessions about um, conflicts of interest and, and going through family... Um, and what they own and family members and all that sort of stuff and you have to include all of that. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to support it. I've taken on the CEO's commitment to take our feedback um, uh, into line there. So I'm, I'm very happy to do that. 
Um, I, but I do think it is a very important thing. Uh, last thing before my time expires is I am concerned about the timing of, of it. I agree the four months, but I, I think, you know, as council, we let lo lots of things slip. But in terms of timing, we should have this policy be reviewed every four years and six months before each election. Um, so that the old council's reviewing it just before the new council starts on, so that the information in it is correct and accurate and up to date. Um, and, and that's the timing that we should probably look at. So probably around the April, May mark of the year of the election um, that's gonna be held in November is probably the right time to, for us to review it um, on a four yearly cycle. But that's all I've got to say. Um, I, I will support it, thank you. Councillor Harvey, I'm going back to you. Thank you, Mayor. There are induction orientation processes in place in all business employment, and this should be no different in council, particularly when important decisions are being made from day one, as Councillor Cornish has just said. We all need the basic tools to function in a professional manner in, and in our new environment. It clearly says in item two that it comes back to us to add to. So that is covered, Councillor um, Jones. Matt Spearman has recently taken over his position as Director of Corporate and is ready to assist us with what we require as councillors moving forward with induction. So thank you very much, Matt. By sharing ideas and putting forward suggestions, I feel it can only benefit us all and those who may take our seats in the future. So yes, we all will have our say on this matter. I hope you will support sh this sharing of ideas on induction and orientation to provide guidance and clarity and make it an easier transition to council working life for all involved in the future. Thank you. I put the motion, all those in favour? Against, motions carried. Now I'll move to 13.2, the rating cap threshold at Councillor Zing. Thank you, Mayor. It's a very straightforward and brief motion, simply calling for a new rate capping threshold in the draft rating policy for the upcoming year 24-25. The proposal aims to provide support and relief to those who may face financial strain due to potential rate increases, especially the elderly and disability community. Obviously, we have the rate cap provision under sections 153 applied to us, which serves as a ceiling on the rate increase experienced by ratepayers annually. The City of Burnside already implements such a cap for all residential ratepayers in our current rating policy. However, considering the impending rate being considered by the Council this year, the cap is under internal review to guide our decision-making process effectively. Some Councils extend rate capping specifically to pensioners or government support recipients, often at a lower rate than the general cap, which is proposed here. In essence, the motion before us presents an opportunity to extend support and relief to our community members who rely on support pensions. As we navigate the new rating, it is essential that we prioritise the wellbeing of all members of our community, particularly those who may be more vulnerable and in need of assistance. Hopefully your support. Thank you. Seek a seconder. Councillor Davey, do you wish to speak now? Thank you. No, I'll hold my debate, reserve my debate. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Councillor Corn. A question. I'm not quite certain about what the new rate might be. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, I know um, Councillor Zeng's been working with Mr Spearman. I might just refer that to Mr Spearman for some comments. Uh, through the Mayor, can you clarify the question? Was that what the, the rate will be or what the rate cap will be? Rate cap. So, thank you, that's been clarified. The rate cap. Uh, in working with Councillor Zing, the current maximum rate is the 12.5. Uh, so with this, we were considering proposing the 9.5. Councillor Turn. Um, just a question, please. Um, I asked the question, and, and Mr. Cooper told me, or told us all, and I said, How many formal requests for financial hardship assistance have there been over the last few years? And the answer was five. 
and all of these have been assessed with flexible payment plans for talking up the postponement of rates for seniors. So, to me, it's a storm at a teacup. Councillor Corden. Sorry, another question, Your Worship. Um, has the administration put its mind to how much it might cost them to manage or assess whether or not people are on an aged or disability support pension? Like, do we readily collect that information? How are you going to collect it? Are you going to have to hire staff to actually monitor that? Like, I, I'm just, you know, we're not geared up to do that. Is what about how you, have you put your mind to that if that happens? Through Madam Mayor, offer that to Mr Spearman. <coughs> Through the Mayor, in a worst case scenario, we did model that there is an estimated 8,000 properties where there may be um, people with, with pensions or concessions. Uh, you, you are quite right that we're not currently set up for it. We, we don't retain personally identifiable information, which means that it will be a, 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 a workload increase for our customer experience team uh, in order to be able to cite the information and then, uh, and then identify in a database whether they're eligible or not for the, the concession. Councillor Davey. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question. Um, under what process or how did we reach the, the reduction from the 12.5% to a proposed change to 9.5, please? Three Madam Mayor, I'll refer that to Mr Spearman. Through, through the mayor, the, so the existing rate cap that we have being the 12.5, uh, that still needs to be reviewed. However, arguably, if that were to remain, the, the, the lower rate or the concession rate for, for pensioners would then be the 9.5, but we don't have that completely modeled at this stage. Councillor Joan. Uh, look, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm sure this is very well-meaning, but I'm with Councillor Turnbull. We already have a hardship policy uh, where anybody who's in financial hardship can apply for relief. Um, so I don't see why we specifically um, are singling out people on aged and disability support pensions, because you might be unemployed and you might be equally deserving of relief under our hardship policy. Um, equally, you know, financial planners are, are wonderful at making sure that people get a part age pension despite owning millions of dollars in assets. Um, so I'm, I'm a bit reluctant to just say, just because you get a dollar a week part pension, you qualify for this despite the fact that you may be under no financial hardship whatsoever. Mm. Um, so, look, well-meaning, uh, I think it would be an administrative nightmare. Um, so, I cannot see that our existing hardship provisions don't already provide for people suffering financial hardship. So, I think this is just unnecessary and I'm voting against it. Councillor Court. Um, I, see, I too am also going to unfortunately vote against it. Um, we are talking about a 3% difference in a rate cap. So everyone's eligible for a 12.5% rate cap. Rate cap. Um, if, if their rates go above that, they can ask for it. Uh, we've got the hardship provision. So we're only talking about a 3%. Um, but of that 3%, the rest of the rate payers will have to cover that. And then on top of that, we've got the administrative burden of having people checking everyone's pensions and marking them off and making sure that they qualify for this new 9.5% 9 9 rate cap rather than the 12.5% rate cap when we've, you know, it's going to cost us a heck of a lot more to administer um, than it is would provide benefit to the community um, uh, when they could just get the ask for the 12.5% rate cap and then ask for the hard, hardship provisions that we've currently got that are listed. There's a whole page of them on the back of rates notices. So I, I, I can't support the motion um, for that. Um, I, I also recall um, uh, how hard it was for the state government to change their concessions 
Um, if you remember, there were concessions that were handed out for this uh, for rates ages ago, but then they changed it. But it took them forever to do because once you put something in uh, like this and offer concessions, it's really hard to reverse it later on down the track um, without huge community uproar. But I, I just don't think it's necessary in this instance. Councillor Hallett. Um, yeah, the, I'm finding it hard to support it. Um, because I think it is well-meaning, but I've got really serious concerns about how practical it can be rolled out. And I'm also concerned about that the state government has, has actually applied a cost of living allowance, and that cost of living allowance is supposed to cover council, it's a discount, if you like, to re replace the previous discount for pensioners and to, cover, to help cover their council rates. So the cost of living allowance was for the, to help pay the council rates for health care and daily living expenses. So to me then, it's applying an extra discount and I'm not sure that that's a good move. Thank you. Councillor Hallett, oh, thank you. Councillor Henschke. Mm, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, question for the administration, if I may. The um, hardship policy, is there anything more we can do to raise awareness, get uptake, uh, maybe reduce the, um, there is an interest rate, etc. I'm just like your thoughts on that. Thank you. Uh, through Madam Mayor, we do promote the hardship policy as part of uh, when people receive their annual rates notice. Um, but certainly with the likely rate rises we're going to propose this year, I, I think we can do some more to promote that further, mm -hmm. just so people are acutely aware of their options. Mm -hmm. I've no, no issue with that at all. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question. Um, if this doesn't, if this uh, motion doesn't get up tonight, will we be, when we're considering the budget, will we be considering the 12.5% um, rate cap? Uh, three minutes. Thank you for that question, Councillor Davey. Um, your thoughts are correct that whichever way, sorry, if this doesn't get up, or even if it does get up, we will need to reconsider that 12.5%, absolutely. May I ask a question? Just in relation, if this does get up, does this have any impact um, on the Privacy Act? Because I'm just concerned that investigating people's pensions and their entitlements, etc., might be an invasion of privacy, so um, just I'd like to be aware. Um, through Madam Mayor, I'll refer that to Mr. Spearman. Through the Mayor, we would be very conscious about that, so we would have to cite it. It would take a little bit more administration. We wouldn't have people send us their personal information, for example, even electronic copies. It would have to be visibly cited, which means they, they would have to come in. Councillor Henschke. Oh, thank you. Um, our policy is due for review in a couple of months, in 2024. The interest rate is the local government association um, prescribed interest rate. Is there anything more we can do to have a lower interest rate? Through Madam Mayor, that, that, re sorry, that interest rate is prescribed by the legislation or the regulations. So no, we don't have an ability to amend that. Right, thank you. Going to go back to Councillor Zing now. Happy to vote, Mayor. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Motion is lost. Um, we'll now move to uh, our confidential item, oh, which is... Item, item 14, if that's all right. Oh, you have an urgent? Uh, yes, yeah, okay. I seek leave of the meeting, if I could, Your Worship. Um, today marks a pretty significant milestone for someone in the chamber. 18 years ago today, Barry Kant, Director of Environment and Place, who had a little more hair and it was a little less grey and he was perhaps half the size he is right now. I did get permission from him that I could say that. He asked me to say that. He's... He started here at the city of Burnside 18 years ago 
As we know, it takes a special person uh, to put community and the local community and look after them for such a long period of time. The many late nights here, weekends away from family and friends, and I'd just like to thank Barry for his commitment to the City of Burnside over the 18 year period. Thank Barry you. Can. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd known, I'd have baked one. Um, Council, um, now we move to item 15. I seek someone to move a motion to go into confidence, and that will not come from Councillor Jones. <laughs> uh, Council, you're moving to move into confidence, seconded by Councillor Dawes. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. And we will move to page 49. Item 15.1. Yes, I know we're not ready to start.